Koh Phi in 2022 is one of the most famous islands in all of Thailand. And I would say, in terms of how it looks, for good reason. But at the same time, it's not a big place. And I have to tell you, my feelings about it are very mixed. And in today's video, I want to share with you. How is it right now? How does it look? What is there to do? So, as you probably know, there's always the one version you see on the internet. And then, there's reality. And Koh Phi Phi really has two different sides. And in today's video, I want to share with you my honest experience and tell you if I feel like it's worth coming or not. Because this is also part of the reality. Okay, so this is the expectations of Maya Bay. This is the reality of Maya Bay. We are running a little bit for the crowds here. So guys, beating the crowds, they say. Okay, so as of right now, walking down from the super famous viewpoint here on the island, arrived last night from Phuket. Coming in, I already was a little bit like uh, irritated. You come in at the port, there is a Burger King, there is a, a... Generally, the port is not in the best condition. And I've been here actually two, three years ago, and it looked a little bit worse. Where I was like, oh, no, I'm really, you know, it's kind of sad to see if some of these tourist areas uh, are taking a hit but then you walk through the city and you kind of start to realize that there's a lot of new things happening a lot of constructions a lot of new places that also look really nice Okay, and while we're here by the beach, I want to talk to you also for a second about one of the, let's say, painful things when traveling, when being connected to a lot of different countries, a lot of different currencies. You know, back in the day when I wanted to send money abroad, be it like, for example, right now in Thailand, the Thai baht, any other country I uh, travel to, maybe I want to send some money to a friend. Maybe I want to pay for a service, like pay for a deposit of an apartment. Especially with traditional banking, it has been fairly complicated expensive and also it took a long time to do an international transfer this is where paycent comes in paycent makes it very easy to send money to over a hundred different countries in all types of different currencies and the thing about it it's very fast so most transfers go through within a few hours or maybe a day if not even instantly and the best thing about it is the fees are very low but with my code danny free you can get completely for free the first three transactions with also a better exchange rate that's another thing if you use traditional banking the exchange rate sometimes takes away just too much of your money that you wanted to send to a friend or pay for something so basically with paysan you just go to the app store you download their app you sign up with all your details so in comparison to a regular bank account it is also so much faster to set it up then you choose the country where you want to send money to you choose your currency be it the dollar the euro the pound whatever it may be the fees are always very transparent and at the end of the day it has the same security as any other banking system it's verified by visa mastercard so there's nothing to worry about whenever you need to make a transfer to almost any currency you can imagine Payson makes it fast affordable and easy with that i'll link my code denny free in the description so thank you to Payson for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to copp and so now after three days in copp i want to talk a little bit about how I feel about it. The good, the bad, but mostly, honestly, let's start a little bit of the good. If you're watching this video, like there's no way you could have missed it. The scenery here is absolutely unbelievable. It's like out of a painting, like out of a movie. It's really one of those places where a lot of what you see on social media, a lot of what you see on YouTube, especially on Instagram, when you pump up these like saturation filters, it's not really real. Sometimes the waterfalls you come to, they're not bluish at all. They're not that great. But here in Koh Phi Phi, you have to say, even though the place is absolutely packed with people, the nature is breathtaking. It's absolutely amazing. It's one of, it's one of the most beautiful places aesthetically, really, I would say, in the whole world. And the place kind of has an interesting history in the sense of 
when the tsunami hit in 2004. This place and the other islands around here. Yeah, it was kind of, yeah, terrible definitely. And they rebuilt it over the last decade. And now what you see again is because of COVID, obviously this place has been mostly shut down. So you do see a lot, a lot of constructions. When you just walk around, this kind of surprised me. You arrive, it looks like they're, I've mentioned in the first impression, they're building a sewage system. A lot of places are closed down, shut down, maybe out of business, maybe under construction. At the same time, new places are opening up. So I feel like right now Thailand is opening up and if you're planning to come, there's very little restrictions. Like you used to have to quarantine, have to do a PCR test, have to do this and this and that. The place is gonna be again more alive, more vibrant because some streets are kind of really cool. There's some really nice places, good vibe. Other places are kind of like look a little bit abandoned, honestly. And this is like important for me to share with you both perspectives, not to just sugarcoat all the nice uh, places because definitely some pro problems with like also trash disposal and things like that. But I think it's also a really very much connected to the fact that they have been kind of like running on very low capacity here and just a lot of uh, things people don't... I mean, you know, like it's not full of tourists so a lot of places are not yet opening up or under construction. A few days ago we did a trip to Maya Bay. Either the video is already out or it will be coming soon after this. And I have to say, I was impressed and blown away once again. I Last time I was in Koh Phi, I didn't go there and I thought like, yeah, I'm sure it's a nice beach. I've seen a few nice beaches, but wow, this is really in the top five, even though the crowds there are huge. But here, Bianca is filming me in the background with her camera. It's gonna be a bit of a vlog inception. But at the end of the day, I have to say like, hey, for living here, I probably could not stay longer than a week just because it is a little bit tense and everybody, you know, invites you to a certain tour and things like that. But to stop by for two, three days, especially if you're just on vacation, especially if you maybe happen to be like whatever, a party person in some capacity, I would say this is definitely one of the most beautiful settings you could be doing this in. And this is kind of like my wrap up for this place. This is Kopi P. Let's go right now. Ready to go to Long Beach? Yes. Let's do it. What is your opinion on Kopi P? Give us the give us the real deal. Uh, when we just arrived the first night, I felt horrible because just lots of constructions and everything is kind of like broken. But the day after that, we went to the viewpoint. I get to see the you know the whole view of Kopi P, and I kind of like appreciate this like massiness or you know like a broken part of Kopi P because you have them uh, both but I think of all it's like could be not could be it is a really nice place right because now we are it's not the best time to come here but I think now they're getting ready so if you're coming to Kopi P maybe two or three months I think you will have a very good time here yeah in terms of if you want it to be like all alive and busier but honestly, if you want to live a bit uh, the lifestyle that I talk about, kind of like traveling, living remotely, maybe working at Kofi P, just stop by for a day or two, enjoy yourself, enjoy the beaches, do a boat trip, because honestly, I cannot see myself here, you know, spending over a week. I probably would lose my mind a little bit, you know. Yeah. But it just doesn't look like any other, like for example, it doesn't look like nothing like... Um, Bali? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Bali like, is like a boutique, everything is very detailed, example, it's just yeah. like so nice. Here you just have to embrace the raw feeling. <laughs> but while while the nature is just perfect, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. nature is like, whatever, to use your word, as boutique as it gets, you know. Yes. Let's keep walking, let's go. Hope I give you an honest perspective, guys. Don't want to sugarcoat everything all day like you see it in most travel videos, right? Yeah. <laughs> This is the pier. A lot of people just arrived. Yeah. That is quite convenient. Okay, and so here we are at the port of Kobe B. This is most likely where you are gonna be arriving if you would be coming here. So on the one side, it's 
crazy. This is just a random board with like really old boats, but you have the super clear water down there. You almost just want to jump in together with the boat and the gasoline that they're shipping over here on the other side of us. We're having a Burger King right here. Okay guys, actually kind of surprisingly we found like this is like right next to the local market behind the port Really really nice cafe. It's kind of like on the corner. It's very low-key when you walk by it but when you come in It's a nice little room the coffee haven't tried it yet. Let's go It's pretty freaking good coffee and as of right now, just gonna take a little bit of time, catch up on a little bit of work. There's like right now a lot of planning into the Thailand video series, a lot of email, a lot of different like... Uh, but in terms of cafes, I think this is one of the only few that kind of feels like a nice, you know, co-working cafe. So what is this? A Roasters? 23. 23 Roasters Scrubby. Looks like a chain. They have the, the coffee club, but... Today, kicking off the morning on the roof of the place we're staying. I'm doing a little bit of exercise with the bands, and you know, it just gave me a little flashback. I think to 2018 or something when I just been starting making videos. When I just started to travel full time, or at least back in the day, it was a little experiment. I was like, hey, let me try doing these videos. Let me try head out, and yeah, since then, just standing here a little bit, having some nice music, had some nice, I don't know, just positive feelings of our own and just a little bit kind of like this idea of like hey proud but never satisfied in the sense of really was able to yeah build the life that I wanted to live in like 2018 19 two three four years later this is exactly kind of like what I wanted to do travel the world create content work with different people and just yeah live life on my own terms that was kind of like a little bit of a dream when in 2018 i was working out on a rooftop in Aonang. i think that was on the first time i made like kind of like my money online and yeah i was like wow this could be real and now it is but it's still just the beginning of once again another chapter that's the exciting thing about life it's kind of like hey take it one step out of t uh, at a time you always love it you always but at the same time it's about it's about the growth it's about playing the game and uh, yeah, now we're here and I'm walking into the distance and thinking about future visions, future ideas of what I could see, what I could build, how life could be looking like two, three, five, ten years later on. And yeah, not sure if I'm going to come to PP again in five or ten years to reflect on that, but <laughs> the scenery is beautiful. Around six years ago, I realized that there is so much more beyond the borders of what you're familiar of. That a world to see was born, and it is all about living and traveling through different countries, all under the premise of finding more. More opportunity, more adventure, more freedom. <laughs> <laughs>